I'm here to reclaim anonymity. I'm here to reclaim anonymity from abusers. I'm here to reclaim anonymity from trolls. If you have read the news in the last year, and if you're here, you probably have, then almost certainly you will have heard the word anonymous in only two contexts, either the activist group or attached to the word troll, anonymous troll. But actually, what is the history of anonymity? Who uses anonymity and what do they use it for? Why is it still one of the most important things that we can use today? There's a saying that Anonymous is our greatest writer. Anonymous is one of our greatest novelists. Anonymous is a woman who had to use a man's name because there was a law saying she couldn't publish books unless her husband or her father approved of them. Anonymity actually existed a very long time before this expectation that we'll know the names behind everything that's written. Anonymous was the original writer. Anonymous was like a river that carried all of the collective knowledge of human culture, our religion, and our science forward. And really, in the English language tradition, it wasn't actually until about the time of Chaucer that we started to expect to know a name behind who wrote what. Anonymity, in that sense, is extremely important. We have this idea that knowing who writes what we read makes it more authoritative, but anonymity is very often the voice of authority. It's the voice of everyone, and it's the voice of no one. It's the voice of reason, it's the voice of unreason, it's the voice of the Bible, it's the voice of a family of sisters who created their own little worlds and brought them into our world. Why do people use anonymity? Why have they used anonymity when being named has been an option for them? Well, in my case, I started writing a blog anonymously in 2003. The reason why I chose anonymity is because the subject matter, uh, being a sex worker, while not illegal in the UK, was very stigmatizing, and I was afraid that if people knew this about me, it would have ended what was then the very beginning of my science career. That, that went on to become a series of books and then a television show, and six years later, my name became attached to that work. What I discovered in that time is that the value of anonymity for the writer is enormous, but for the reader, it's not quite as important to know who's writing. For example, when Jane Austen published her books, which were much loved in her lifetime, she published them under the name By a Lady, which really says all that we need to know. Do we love her work more now because we can go on a Jane Austen tour, we can dress in the clothing of the time, we can see the tiny little pie crust table, which is hardly bigger than some people's laptops, where she wrote out all of her manuscripts longhand. That's all beautiful trivia, and it adds much to Jane Austen as the person, but it doesn't make her books any better. People loved them just as much when they had no idea who was behind it. Other people have used anonymity to hide a criminal background. This is Villon, the famous French poet. Uh, we don't even know his real name. He murdered a solicitor and nicked that name off him, and that's the only name we know him by. I love this picture, because it may not even be him, but this is the traditional representation of this poet. And you see him holding out one hand as if to welcome you. He's waving hello, and with the other, he's reaching for his dagger. He's saying, welcome to my world, let me tell you all about my experience, but please, don't get too close. Thomas Paine, who uh, wrote anonymous works. This is a corset maker from Norfolk. This is a man who inspired revolutions in the United States and in France. Anonymity was so important at that time because being known for what you wrote, if it was politically challenging, could get you killed. And in fact, there are a lot of people today who say, well, of course, anonymity is important if you're somewhere where there's a revolution going on and your life might be at stake if you're unmasked. And of course, people saying that assume that that's what's happening in North Korea, that's what's happening in Syria. They don't seem to realize quite how recently that was true 
in the West. In the 17th century, there was a publisher named of John Twine in London, and at the time, there were very restrictive laws about who could publish what, names had to be attached to it, publishers were answerable for everything. He published a pamphlet with no author's name attached to it, and this pamphlet was really very critical of the king. It was considered seditious. John Twine was hung, drawn, and quartered because he refused to name the person who wrote the pamphlet who was not him. He died for somebody else's anonymity. And if we think that that's something that exists hundreds of years ago and could never happen in this country again, then perhaps you're not reading the papers quite as closely as you think. James Weldon Johnson brought the experience of what it was like to be a black man to early 20th century America. He did so anonymously and was unmasked 20 years later. Louisa May Alcott wrote anonymously. Alexander Pope, now of course, we look at Pope today and we look at his fine poetry and we say, this white man of great privilege, why did he need anonymity? At the time, he was Catholic, he was part of a persecuted minority. When we look at the people who use anonymity, very often they are the people on the fringes. They are the people from minorities. They are the people who do not have powerful voices, who would lose a great deal if they were named. And this is probably why Virginia Woolf, in one of her last essays, said anonymous was a woman. Because by and large, anonymous is very often a woman, not just a sex blogger, or a mummy blogger, but somebody who is crossing borders by opening up an experience that otherwise would never be listened to. If you knew my name when I wrote my blog, you wouldn't have taken it as seriously. Anonymity actually adds something. Anonymity, you could be reading the words of someone sat next to you on the tube. You could be reading the words of someone half a world away. It takes the intensely personal, and it makes it universal. It brings something extra to the work. There are also the people who are already published and already successful who choose anonymity later on in their careers. People like J.K. Rowling. Why would she choose to publish a book as Robert Galbraith? Could it be because we've stuck her in a box marked Harry Potter that we won't let her out of? And if she went to her publisher and perhaps said, do you know what, I'd really just love to write a police procedural and publish it under the name of J.K. Rowling, Perhaps she would have been laughed out of the room, but Robert Galbraith could publish that book. Lewis Carroll, so that he could maintain his academic career and also engage elaborate fantasy world. O. Henry, another criminal turned author. And again, we like to think that we know about the underbelly of society, but this is a man who wrote uh, fables about truly underprivileged poor people in America that are still read by people today. Then, of course, in the prehistory, in the pre Chaucer period, we have our Aesops, we have our Homers, we have our imaginary figures who are anonymous by circumstance. We have the people who are really more archetypes than they ever were humans, and they probably weren't even single humans at all. Bell hooks, the adoption of a pseudonym to underline the fact of rejecting something that you feel that your name may indicate about your history. James I, a king, writing anonymously because his commentary on his own laws would not have been read and understood in the way that he wanted it to be. We think of anonymity as being something that perhaps couldn't exist in the scientific world, and then we have the case of Nicolas Bourbaki, which was a collective of French mathematicians all publishing under the same fake assumed name because they felt the movement of what they were trying to do, what they were trying to get across with their work, was more important than knowing who the specific academics associated with it were. Going deeper into the academic tradition, of course, we have the peer review system, where you might be named, everybody knows your publishing history, but the people who approve what you write for publication are not necessarily known to you. 
Stephen King is another author who published under a pseudonym. He used Richard Bachman to break out of very restrictive publishing contracts. Benjamin Franklin, yes, politicians use anonymity too when it suits them. The Pearl Poet, the Gawain Poet. Phyllis Wheatley, technically this is a pseudonym. We don't know what her real name was. We only have her slave name. And finally, of course, Jane Austen. Now with a lot of discussion in the last year over the abuse that can occur online, with, it's been one of the biggest stories in 2013 of what happens to women who are public online and getting enormous amounts of abuse. One thing that we have to remember is while the press keeps using the term anonymous troll over and over and over again, most trolls are not, in fact, anonymous. Some of them use pseudonyms, but many of them are actually discoverable. Many trolls, when unmasked, continue to troll and abuse people under their real names. And it's time that we understood that actually a narrative which paints all people who use anonymity as potential criminals or abusers is playing into the hands of much bigger interests. It's playing into the hands of governments that want to silence dissenters. It's playing into the hands of businesses who want us to be online always with a real name and a credit card number attached because they are interested in exploiting us. And we have to think, who are the big people who do not want you to be anonymous? Why don't they want you to have a public life, a private life, or an inner life? Who are other people who use anonymity? Domestic violence survivors communicating with each other online use anonymity. Trans men and women communicating online who fear being outed to their communities because of the high rates of real-world physical violence against them use anonymity. Anonymity not only has a place, it has an extremely important place in our society today. And the last thing I want to leave you with, really, is what would Jane Austen do? Jane Austen would be on the side of anonymity. <laughs>